Wherever you are in the world, there's been a, an alcoholic beverage, and really all you need is a sugar source and yeast, and that's all natural, and um, the rest is really a discovery. And so depending on where you are on planet Earth, humans have discovered that nature's concoction of fermented beverages. My name is Kevin Cullen, the curator here at the Neville Public Museum of Brown County. This is actually coming up on our 100th anniversary in 2015. The museum's principal kind of uh, mission is art, history and science. So combining those elements into this exhibit is actually quite poignant. So agriculture to tavern culture, the art, history and science of beer, then I think it actually is really uh, succinct because it takes you from grain to glass, ultimately taking you kind of in a processual project uh, and understanding of how beer is made and of course tavern culture in the end and how that informs social circumstances, ideologies, identity, and as well as a way of just socially understanding, lubricating our well-being, and that's been happening for thousands of years. After the Erie Canal opened in 1825, you see now the, the agricultural implementation coming in, the, the, the breaking of the land. The breaking of that land was soon followed by planting of wheat and barley. Wisconsin was one of the largest wheat producing states, uh, in fact, in North America, if not the world. In fact, the global price of wheat was set in Milwaukee uh, during the 1860s, 70s, 80s. Uh, the Grain Exchange, it's still there today. It's one of the most beautifully opulent buildings in, in North America, I would say. So agriculture has been a huge component uh, of our economy, and as a result of that, the surplus, both here in Wisconsin and globally, was turned into other things, like fermented beverages or, or in bread. Um, so Wisconsin was poised uh, to take over as a, as a capital for brewing as a result of that because of its climate. Freshwater resources, so cold weather in the winter, creating ice in the, in the 1800s without artificial refrigeration allowed for lager beer to be stored long term and preserved over the winter months. So we had all these ingredients including the most important thing which is the ethnic uh, tradition and that came from Germany, Scandinavia, Belgium, Ireland and all these countries in Europe were bringing these traditions with them with the ripe fertile ingredients that existed here as they broke the land from the 1830s onwards. It's actually a watershed year, really, for brewing in, in Green Bay. Um, Tidaltown Brewing Company across the street, they're expanding. Brent Weicker has just been tremendous with his personal collection of Breweriana, um, as well as, as props from the brewery itself. Badger State Brewing Company is exploding. They're expanding this year as well. And in fact, they have, uh, we have a fermenter. Their very first conical fermenter is, is on exhibit. Um, and then the fourth, of course, would be Hinterland. And Hinterland is also a neighbor. And they, all of them loaned us something. And so they also give us a, a tap handle that's on our tavern, uh, in the tavern culture component of the exhibit. So being located downtown, across from two breweries, and in the vicinity of two other breweries, and where other historic breweries existed since the 1850s, literally this is sort of the, the pulsing heart, the, the, the tavern bar, as it were, where people have congregated uh, since humans have settled here, ultimately. In the tavern part of this exhibit, you'll see lots of great saloons from both Green Bay and the surrounding communities that really give that sense of what it was like to belly up to the bar 100 plus years ago. I have 30 plus 40 different recipes in Milwaukee and our plan is to, to actually bring those classes here to the Neville Public Museum uh, in the forthcoming months and hopefully forthcoming years to, to continue uh, this great tradition of, of fermenting the museum.